WTO rank two from Great Britain, Lucy Charles Barkley. Focus, focus, focus from Lucy Charles Barkley. I'm never going to give in, I'm never going to back down, I'm never going to give up, I'm always going to keep pushing. She's come here really confident and really ready to execute a good race. It's exceeding expectations, the former PTO number one wants her place back at the top. <laughs> I'm going to have the full team on unload GT, I think. Hello. Seven bucks. for the stop pushing off the wall and be like <gasps> <laughs> We have come to Font Remote. Don't know what you just said, we've come to Font Remote to do our altitude camp. We've never been here before. Feels like a bit of a maze today just getting used to everything but seems like a really nice place. Excited to explore the trails, go out on my bike and obviously do a swim today, see how it feels start adapting to the altitude again and um, yeah and hopefully have a really good block of work here. Yeah. I wanna be able to do it's much that. Harder on the ring than on the bar. Is that the yeah. I've still got Epic Forest Mud in my toe now. Yeah. <laughs> From running. Cleaned up the 
that it's swimming, this muscle is aching. I think it's from the chin up. <laughs> sure, that's not <laughs> That's an exercise. So the main reason we chose Font Rameau this time to do our training camp leading into the first big race was mainly because my sponsor ASICS had a camp going on there. They basically have a house there where any of the ASICS athletes can stay, use the facilities at the Altitude Training Centre there with other top level athletes. So we decided to go and stay there. We didn't actually stay at the ASICS house itself, mainly because we wanted to go with our dogs and we took our family with us as well. So my parents and Holly came along with us and we thought it would be a really nice way to do quite a long camp but almost feel a bit more chilled and a bit more laid back than maybe when we're in Club the Centre and we don't have our dogs and our family there so we decided to mix it up a little bit and actually it was really nice to go on a camp with the dogs it was the first time we'd done this and we were able to drive there as well so it meant that we could take our road bikes our TT bikes and any equipment that we needed we could just drive with all of it so it just made the travelling that little bit easier than having to to get on an aeroplane. We are going to be running around the lake here, it's about 8.3 kilometres a lap I think, and we're going to do at least two laps but maybe three, so we're getting our kind of long run done today. Hopefully we get warm when we get running, I'm sure we will, sun's out, nice and fresh, should be good. I think it's Lake Mate Mel but I'm not sure. Should be good isn't it? Oh, you stretching and limbering up. Ready, go. done yeah I think every year there's a lot of anticipation over the first race of the season and I felt it even more so this year because I had wanted to start racing earlier than a big major championship race however my training hadn't really aligned I'd had a few illnesses along the way and I just didn't feel ready to race earlier than this first race in Ibiza so I've been watching people racing there have been some amazing performances and you're almost sat there thinking how competitive am I going to be with this level of racing has the bar been raised since I last raced or are people just having good days that you just don't know you can judge on your own training but until you actually put yourself on a start line with the other women you just don't really know where you're at so there's always a lot of nerves a lot of anticipation for the first race of the season but this is probably the biggest first race of the season I've ever had I usually do a slightly lower tier race and then build up to the bigger ones but this was a really big one to start the season and I was really excited for it but still quite nervous at the same time I'm rolling. <laughs> Doing the fun rolling. <laughs>
go run around to do our warm up. We've got to run up there somewhere. Between four minutes and 345 ish. Yeah. I don't feel too bad. Right over there. Wait, we want to start up at the that corner? Yeah. Okay. Just what like jog roll into it. Yeah. Quite it's busy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pressure's on. Don't be the loop then I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want it? Do you want it because you might get really lost? <laughs> Let's do one of each. <laughs> <laughs> Two <laughs> plus three plus three plus five plus four. Let's do one what blue. Let's, let's one just... jaune and one orange. <laughs> Very British. Let's just see orange. if we make it back to here. Okay. Should I take my phone? <laughs> See what happens, yeah? yeah. Blue, right. Triangles or the Look, the triangles are on the other side of the tree. Yeah, we follow these blue arrows that way then. Yeah. Yeah. We've done okay. <laughs> Six thirty. Oh. We've got to come back up it. Well, but we started that way. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So where do you want to go? I want to go back to where I saw blue. Right, let's go that way then. And just stick to blue, because it said 2.8k. So I've nearly done 2k. <laughs> Let's go back to that way. Yeah. Easy run. Ten k easy run with a hike. What are we at? We've done three k, and we've done. I just had an eight minute k. We've done two point seven kilometers and <laughs> six hundred meters of climbing. Twenty one minutes of running. <laughs> but near not even three k. Average of twenty percent. I mean, are we going back down that? Yeah, but obviously. to altitude this was pretty much my third training camp of the year I'd done two at Club La Santa in Lanzarote and then this was the first one that I was doing at altitude this is actually probably the 
third or fourth time I've been to altitude now, but this was going to be the longest time spent at altitude, but it was at a much lower altitude than the camps I'd done previously. So we wasn't sure if that lower altitude was going to be less effective or whether it was going to allow me to train better we just wasn't quite sure so we were excited to go up there initially the feeling was that it was much easier than the altitude we trained at before I remember going to higher altitudes like in Sierra Nevada and I'd have a headache for an entire week as I was adapting to the altitude I didn't get one headache at all in Font Rameau so definitely that lower altitude was having less negative effects on me but at the same time we was questioning but is it actually being effective in the same way that the higher altitudes have been for me previously. Like when I get hypoxic my hip flexors go like... I just need a wee. That's good. I get worried I'm going to breathe water in as well because I'm so like... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna like suck air in under, but I'm so wanting air that I'm just suck gonna breathe in, in under water. Suck it in. Suck it in. Yeah, it seems like your lips are gonna pop as well. <laughs> this is gonna be the new stuff. Oh. <laughs> Basically nearly 20 kilos, so no wonder I couldn't hit 20 reps. 
Spree. So, both of us have now got doms forever. I'm getting tired of us constantly fighting and hurting when we don't need to. difficult to peak for race day. I leave that to my coach Dan to kind of do the training, get the taper right and then have me race ready, fresh and ready to go on race day and I think that's sometimes more difficult when it is the first race of the season because you've been training a lot for a long time and me personally I was like oh, I could see my fitness improving and then you almost don't want to pull off the gas to rest for the race because you want your fitness to keep going up but then you have to remember that's why you do your training to then recover, taper down and be fresh and ready to race and I think we actually did get it absolutely spot on. I would say about two weeks out from the race I was so fatigued that we decided to kind of pull back my training a little bit earlier than maybe we normally would for a 100k distance and then I could see the freshness coming back. I was able to hit some really good sessions in the last 10 days leading into the race and started to feel confident that I could have a good race. Maybe about a month before, before we actually got to altitude, I felt like I was working really, really hard but not seeing the training progression, I guess. Everything still felt quite difficult and I was waiting for that session where like, it's clicking, I feel really good, the training's working. And that actually didn't happen until I got to altitude and I was like, okay, I feel like I'm actually getting there now. I'm able to hit some great sessions across swim, bike and run. And then I started to get confident that I could have a really good race. So we are doing hill reps this afternoon. I've got 24, 40 seconds uphill hill reps and then a one minute 20 downhill recovery uh, split into three sets of eight and easy jogging up here on the flat bit in between so it should be around 13 15k total session and I imagine it's gonna be pretty horrible <laughs> it's the first kind of intensive done on the run I did a little bit on the track the other day this is the first one with more incline in it so I imagine I'm going to be pretty out of breath as literally walking out up that hill I'm out of breath so it's going to be fun. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. <laughs> I've tried to be on brand. <laughs> I better put this on because I panicked. <laughs> Right, where are we warming up? Right, so we need to do basically five minute out, five minute back. So, I don't know what direct, we're not put five minutes that way, probably we'll, we won't, we won't be long So you need to do 10 minutes? Yes. Okay, so let's just go up and down for 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, we're going to
fall down. Yeah. Twenty-four hill reps. Jeez. What have you done? I don't know. Most like elevation ever climbed. Hello, babies. Oh, look at you. Oh, look at you. Hello, hello. What have you got to? <laughs> yeah I think actually the main thing for me was I'd been working really hard in training and you're not enjoying it all the time like sometimes it is a chore it is a graft to kind of get out and train every single day so my main goal for the race was actually to enjoy it I wanted to remind myself why I do this why I love the sport that I'm doing and I think that was the biggest thing for me when I stepped out in Ibiza I was like this is what I love about the sport that we're doing. I love that one, the PTO is putting on the races where I'm going and racing the best women in the world every time I line up and I'm finding exactly where my weaknesses are every time I race these women, which then allows you to go away, go and train and know exactly what you need to work on before the next one. But I just loved the whole environment. I loved the fans that were there. I loved seeing a new place, going to race in Ibiza. I've never been there before. I felt confident before the race, which is a really nice feeling to have. Have. So it just reminded me why I love what I'm doing. So she lines up on the start line. She knows she's going for it. I mean, it's the one certain in the women's race today is that Lucy's going to take out the swim hard. Lucy Charles Barkley's a real shark out there. It's uh, the biggest threat. She's uh, definitely pushing on and pushing the pace. Charles Barkley is leading out the PTO European Tour race on the bike right now. That's Lucy Charles Barkley. She's such a familiar figure at the front of the race. Great bike there by Lucy Charles Barkley. Lucy Charles Barkley to take third here in Ibiza. What an effort it's been from her today. I absolutely feel like the training camp in Font Rameau paid off. As soon as I dropped down from altitude, I felt brilliant. So I knew that the training camp had worked. I remember doing a run the morning after I arrived in Ibiza and I just felt really good. I was like, oh my God, I can breathe. I can talk whilst I'm running. The same when I went and did a swim workout in the pool as well. We actually were questioning if the pace clock was right because the pace felt so easy to hit. So it definitely worked. Super thankful for ASICS for putting on the camp and kind of allowing me to go and explore somewhere that maybe I wouldn't have opted to go and train at and I feel like I would definitely go back there again because it obviously worked for me and it was a really nice environment to train as well. I mean, considering it was the first race of the season and I don't have always the best track record for racing after a break, I normally make some quite big mistakes. I would actually say it went relatively smooth. I opted to swim with my tri-suit zipped down in the swim, mainly because we had quite a large GPS tracker device kind of in the back of our tri-suit between the shoulders. And if I have the zip up on the tri-suit, that makes that quite tightly being pressed into my spine. So I opted to swim with the zip down on my tri-suit, which probably was the only thing I actually struggled to get the zip back up in T1. Other than that, I would say my transitions were quite smooth. I actually opted to not use heart rate or power on the bike. So I was just racing off of feel, which Sometimes I prefer to race like that. I feel that like on that distance, you can't really almost be pacing it. It's almost like a long Olympic distance. You've just got to go with the race. So I was just kind of racing blind in terms of data and just doing what felt right. So whether I will do that again or whether I'll decide to race on data on the next one is probably something I'll think about in my training. But on the whole, it was a really good race. I think for the first race of the season, there's nothing that I would say I did wrong. 
there's definitely things I think I can go and work on now, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how the race went. Yeah, I'd say across the race, I felt fantastic on the swim. I felt good on the bike, not the best I've ever felt. And then on the run, it definitely isn't kind of how I've felt in races before. I didn't feel like I had that pop or spring in my stride as I was running. I felt like into more of a 70.3, even Ironman groove. I didn't feel like my turnover was quick enough. It just felt quite slow and lopey. And then when I have the likes of Anna Haug and Ashley Gentle behind me, it's almost inevitable that they were gonna catch me. Like I could see the way that they set off, the, the pace that they were running compared to me. I know that that's the area where I need to get back to or even go further than the level I was at before. I think the best I've ever ran off the bike was definitely the 70.3 worlds in 2021. I was actually running a slower pace than that in Ibiza and the course in St George was far hillier and far more difficult so I feel like I've still got the potential to get back to that level and hopefully then go past that. The swim's there, the bike's there, the run is where I need to go and work on again now. So I guess when Annie came past, I knew I couldn't even go with her. It was a matter of just sticking to my own pace, my own race strategy. And then when Ashley came past, she definitely put a surge in as she came past, which is tactically exactly what I would do if I was passing an athlete in front of me. But I definitely feel like I didn't let that gap go too big. Part of me almost believed I could go back past her. And I think that's a really good feeling to have. And something I, I already did know this about myself, but it doesn't matter what happens in the race. I'm never going to give in. I'm never going to back down. I'm never going to give up. I'm always going to keep pushing. I was just happy that I kind of refound that within myself that, OK, I've been passed by Annie. I've been passed by Ashley, but I'm not just going to give up. Like I'm still in the podium in one of the biggest races I've ever done. So I feel like that's a really good takeaway for me is that I just know I will always keep going and always keep pushing no matter what happens. Let the swim, let the bike. And it was a tough run with those ladies in the field. Yeah, you know what? I think going into the race, I really didn't have like an outcome goal. Yeah, I always want to contend for the win, but before the race, I wasn't like, oh, I'll be happy with a first place or a second place or a third place. I, I hadn't really thought about that. I just really wanted to execute a good race, find out where I was at across swim, bike and run, and then be able to then go back to training and go, okay, this is exactly what I need to work on before the next big race. And I feel like I've got those takeaways. Super happy with the third place. Obviously, I'm an athlete that's hungry and motivated. Yes, I want to go for the win next time. So I think that's a good thing. It keeps me motivated. It's made me want to go straight back to training after this race. And I'm just excited for the next races. And I'm really fortunate and happy that the PTO are putting on these races so we can continue to race the best athletes. And it's only gonna raise the game and the level that is constantly rising in the women's field, so it's super exciting. So it's a good question, what is coming next? I'm a bit stuck at the moment actually. I've done 90 days in Europe and because of Brexit I am now stuck here. I can go to the US but I cannot go and train or race in Europe without a visa. For over a month now I've been trying to get a German visa to go and race 70.3 Kreitschgau and it hasn't been successful yet. So anyone out there has any advice on this or has done anything similar to be able to go and travel and race, please do let me know because otherwise I won't be racing in Europe until late July, August time. <laughs> With that being the case, I'll probably have to do a 70.3 somewhere because I need to validate for Kona. So that will probably be UK based. After that, the next race will be a PCO race. Yeah, we'll keep you updated on that. But at the moment, I'm just gonna be training at home and hopefully figuring out how I can travel to Europe soon. Still got my tattoos on as well. Lovely. <laughs> Look at my lawn. <laughs> Oh God, I don't know if I can even get in it. Okay, so we're gonna run a bit of a competition. Um, you could win my transition number. I'll sign it. All you have to do to win it is guess how long I'm gonna sit in here. I'm gonna time it so we'll have the exact time. And the closest guess will win this. 
I mean, looking at that, I don't know if it's going to be very long because <laughs> it looks like a slush puppy. <laughs> Top tip is um, just get in. Like don't, don't get only one body part in. Like I feel like it's more painful if just your feet are in. So just get in. <laughs> what do we reckon? Three minutes? Three minutes! <laughs> don't know if I could do 30 seconds. <laughs> Bit out of practice on this. Right. <laughs> okay, thanks for being patient with the vlogs. We are back and hopefully we'll keep bringing you some updates with what we're getting up to. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Ha, ha, ha.